saving money on the sly? It just makes you look cheap. When we got married, my husband used to compliment me, saying I was frugal and a good wife. But in just two years, he had completely changed. You're poor and not a match for me. Divorce me because I'm living with my rich lover. Oh, really? How rich is your lover? You seem to think you're supporting me. Well, that's a huge misconception. It's a relief that I can save myself some trouble. I'll gladly divorce you. I'm Rebecca, a stay-at-home mom who just turned 30. I met my husband, Zach, who is two years older, through a mutual friend three years ago. Zach came at me strong and we started dating right away. After a year of dating, we got married. At the time, I was a receptionist at a major department store, and Zach worked as a corporate employee in a large company. It was a marriage that others envied. I left my job after marriage to become a full-time housewife. Zach's mother is a full-time housewife and frugal. It was my husband's wish that I would always be home to make ends meet and support the family. Zach had lived at home all his life until he got married. He said he had never done housework. However, after marrying me, he started doing most of the cleaning and laundry, saying he didn't want my hands to get rough. Every day, I could feel how much he wanted to treat me like a princess and cherish me. Rebecca, you're beautiful, so stay just the way you are. He used to say such things. In response to my husband's feelings, I also made an effort to save and manage our finances. One year into our marriage, we were blessed with a cute son. Zach took paternity leave and actively participated in childcare, earning the nickname Involved Father from those around us. For the future, we decided to keep a childcare diary together, and Zach bought a diary made of high-quality paper. At first, he willingly wrote about childcare and our life together, but eventually Zach stopped maintaining the diary after about half a year. Nevertheless, I continued to keep the diary, intending to show it to our son someday. Zach's attitude changed dramatically around the time our son turned one. Not only did he stop keeping a diary, he stopped taking care of the baby. He stopped doing any housework that he used to take the lead on. Moreover, he started finding fault with my childcare and housework. He began to complain. <sighs> Your food just tastes poor. You should dress this kid in better clothes. The house smells and it's depressing. The husband who used to praise me for being good at saving money? Where did he go? Moreover, he started coming home unusually late, and the opportunities for the three of us to have dinner together became almost non-existent. On weekdays and holidays, he would go somewhere by himself. When I asked him where he was going, he said he had to go outside because the house smelled so poor. He also kicked my son and me out of his bedroom for crying too loudly at night. I had no choice but to sleep in the living room with my son. Eventually, Zach stopped even holding our son. Then one day, after sending Zach off to work and finishing cleaning and laundry, and as I was preparing to take our son to the park, the doorbell rang loudly. Hello? Looking through the peephole, I saw an unfamiliar woman standing there. Regretting my hasty response, I decided to open the door. Good morning. Do you know who I am? The woman, adorned in branded items from head to toe, spoke impolitely. I shouldn't have any acquaintances like her. After pondering for a moment, Correct. I'm Zach's girlfriend. Hmm. This kid is your son, right? And you're the wife. She started talking. I couldn't make sense of the sudden situation, and I was about to take the word of a woman 
who had just arrived out of the blue. Anyway, I need to talk to my husband. Could you leave? But she replied, I'll stay until Zack comes back. If I leave it to him, it'll take forever. And she refuses to leave. If this kept going on, being trapped in this conversation at the doorway was getting unbearable. I reluctantly let the woman inside. If you hear my story, you'll probably want to break up. But well, you seem to be short on money and there's a baby, right? You won't leave Zack, will you? She said. Conveniently, our son started crying. He's crying, so could you please leave? I said, but she showed no sign of caring and started talking incessantly. She, the same age as me, turned out to be a president's daughter from somewhere and fell for Zack at first sight, actively pursuing him herself. They quickly grew fond of each other. It's been about three months since they started dating. Suddenly, she showed up uninvited, not even paying attention to the crying baby. I couldn't believe how little etiquette today's president's daughters seemed to have. Do you know what Zack says about you? The woman couldn't stop talking. Before marriage, you had a low income, but you worked as a receptionist and he could proudly showcase your beauty. However, now you have no income and give off a poor auntie-like vibe that he can't introduce to anyone. Your food smells like poverty. You insist on home daycare for your son, who's already a year old, until he's three, but you're a stay-at-home mom who doesn't make enough money, so you just can't leave him in daycare. He calls you a parasite for not working and living off him just because you two have a child. There's more, but do you want to hear it? That's enough. Apparently, Zack is having an affair with this woman. Anyway, I will talk to my husband. I shoved the woman out the door. Hurry up and get a divorce, okay? Oh, and I don't want that crybaby either. With these parting words, she finally left. What on earth was that? He's a messed up father, I muttered while soothing my son. Late at night, Zack returned home. I have something to talk about. What is it? Are you tired? If it's just complaints about parenting, say it somewhere else. His usual dismissive response. But I said, Today, a woman claiming to be your girlfriend was at our place. As I began speaking, Zack's face turned pale for a moment, and he began to get flustered. However, he quickly composed himself and said, I'm the one earning the money, you know. You can divorce me if you want. A poor woman like you can't survive without me, right? Even now you're struggling with childcare. Working and raising a child is impossible for you. Oh, and even if you work, with your abilities, can you support the child? Trouble will just come your way. He began threatening. You, who seem to lack intelligence and rely only on your appearance, should be grateful to have someone like me, an accomplished individual with high education and income, as your husband. Oh, and looks-wise, aren't you already an old woman now? He began making a series of demeaning remarks, looking down on me. My husband, Zack, who criticized me, while conveniently ignoring his own infidelity, shocked me more with his words than his affair. I regretted marrying such a man, wondering if I had given too much. The only solace was the presence of our adorable son. From that day on, Zack boldly maintained contact with his affair partner, even going on trips with her. A mutual friend who introduced us attempted to advise him to end the affair, but he turned a deaf ear. Our friend grew exasperated as Zack became increasingly infatuated with his lover. 
Eventually, he stopped providing the $2,000 monthly allowance he used to give. In the midst of all this, I succumbed to the fatigue of childcare and the stress of the situation, experiencing a decline in my health. Our son still very young and our house was in disarray. Yet Zach continued to spend time with his affair partner without lending a helping hand. My husband would not help me, so I had to use a local childcare sitter and housekeeping service to get things done. When my husband Zach found out about it, utilizing the local welfare system instead of hiring a babysitter or a housekeeper directly, you're really going for those petty savings. It just reeks of poverty. With these words, any lingering sympathy I had for Zach disappeared completely. I began contemplating when to bring up the topic of a divorce. I was caught up in childcare and had disheveled hair, so Zach looked at me and said, What's with that damaged hair? Can't you even take care of your hair? You're finished as a woman. He gazed at me as if looking at something dirty. Then he continued, It's just not working out. You, a poor woman, aren't a match for me. Let's get divorced because I'm living with my wealthy mistress. Seems like she doesn't want a kid, so I'll give it to you. He handed me the divorce agreement. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. It saves the trouble of me saying it myself, and there won't be a custody battle. I was secretly jumping for joy. Gladly, I said, as I accepted the divorce agreement. Eh? Is that okay? What do you mean? You're the one who brought it up. Zach looked surprised as he observed my lively demeanor. I guess my parents would want to see him once a month. I'm creating a new family, you know? It's like having an extra burden, and I don't want to see him if I don't have to. He says, I'll hand over child support during visitations. About $140 a month until he turns 18. It's enough for your poor son, right? Even after divorce, I'm doing the right thing. Aren't I generous? He stated an amount well below the standard child support calculation table, and I couldn't tell if he was ignorant or just stingy. It was unexpected for him to bring up child support, but I'm not only claiming child support, but also alimony. I look forward to it. I immediately began preparations to leave the house. As I packed my belongings with my son in my arms, Zach approached and said, A single unemployed mother like you can't afford rent, right? Can you even find a place to rent? You're practically an outcast with no family to return to. I live in the luxurious mansion of my affair partner. I'll do you a final favor, sending your belongings. It's probably some rundown apartment near a supermarket, right? Leave your new address. I remained silent and left the paper with the address on the desk. A few days later, Zach visited my house with a moving company. Despite being outside of town, Zach had made the effort to visit. It seemed like he had come for reconnaissance, thinking the address would be different from what he expected. Huh? Why are you living in a place like this? Found yourself a new man, huh? He asked with wide eyes. My new residence was in a well-known area, famous for the wealthy mansions. My father died of illness when I was very young. My mother raised me with her own hands, but she died three years later as if to take my father's place. Then my maternal grandparents raised me. My grandmother also died when I was 20. My grandfather was a well-known wealthy man who died two years before I married Zach. My mother was an only child, and to my grandparents, I was their only grandchild. So the whole estate was inherited by me. It's a house I own. Since we got married and moved out of town, it has been vacant. Combined with other properties, it's worth around a million dollars. 
I haven't been able to manage it properly. As you mentioned, being a parasite and poor, it's not as grand as your lover's residence, but it's a comfortable place to live. I spoke with a touch of sarcasm. Zack couldn't hide his surprise. What? What do you mean? He started to say. I didn't want to waste my time and energy explaining it to this man, so I kept silent. So that means it's my asset too, right? Surely even after a divorce, I should have rights to half. It's shared property, so hand over half, whether it's money or land. Give me my fair share. He made this outrageous demand, leaving me completely astonished. It's premarital property, so it doesn't become shared property. You, being highly educated and earning well, should know this common knowledge. Who told you that? Your face might be good enough for a new boyfriend. Are you a lawyer or something? He continued with absurd statements. As I stayed silent in disbelief, Zack, as if adding fuel to the fire, continued with more and more absurd statements. Unable to bear it any longer, I spoke up. I'm not relying on anyone for support. The statements I made earlier are common sense, I believe. I was enrolled in the law school, so I have some knowledge, although I haven't used it at all because it's basic common knowledge. At this, Zack responded. What? Weren't you just a high school graduate? I've never heard about that, you traitor. He shouted. I think you're making assumptions about everything, and I think you have made up your, your own mind about me. And the one who deserves the name traitor is you, the one who cheated on your wife. I said calmly. Then Zack said, What's with that tone? If that's the case, you must be rich. Return the moving expenses. Also contribute to our moving expenses as compensation, he demanded. As you've mentioned before, I'm just a poor person with a total asset of only a million dollars. It's beyond my means to accommodate the demands of someone involved with a wealthy partner. Therefore, I'll graciously accept your kindness for the moving expenses as planned. Also, I'd appreciate if you could clarify what the compensation is for. I replied sarcastically. Zack couldn't counter and left muttering complaints. The next day he called. What's going on? The cancellation penalty for the house is $7,000, which is two months' rent. What does that mean? The rent is $3,500 per month? He exclaimed in a panic. It's a standalone house in an upscale residential area. Didn't you find it strange? It was originally my own house, but a month before the divorce, I transferred the rights to another owner and continued living there as a rental under your name. You left me in charge of the house, and it helped that you initiated the divorce. Zack, who had been living with his parents all this time, seemed to be unaware of not only the rent, but also the overall cost of living. Was I living in your house? Being supported by you? Even over the phone, his stunned expression was palpable. A few days later, Zack called again. Hey, what's the deal with child support of $550 and alimony? You're rich, so you don't need it, right? He seemed anxious. In fact, while I was preparing for the divorce, I had recordings of his verbal abuse and evidence that he didn't give me my living expenses. The luxurious diary Zach had prepared has subtly transformed into a notebook documenting not only our child's growth, but also the emotional abuse by my husband. This became another crucial piece of evidence. Furthermore, I had employed a detective agency to obtain evidence of Zack's infidelity. With a lawyer in place, I claimed substantial alimony from both emotional abuse and adultery. I initially had no plans to request child support, but despite having assets, I was unemployed. For the sake of my son, I decided to ensure Zack contributed as a responsible father and included child support in the claim. So you did have a lawyer after all. He started to say that. The lawyer I hired was a woman. It's unbelievable. Zack's level of misconceptions is so pitifully amusing. I can't help but laugh. And then the detective agency's investigation revealed something even more outrageous. 
The woman with whom Zack was having an affair, the daughter of the company president, was actually a marriage fraudster, and her claim to be the daughter of the company president was an outright lie. She had deceived him, claiming that if they got married, her father, who was the company president, would give them a wedding gift. Falling for the scam, Zack ended up shouldering the entire debt of his cheating partner, who turned out to be a scam artist. However, she disappeared without a trace after the marriage. Zack looked very upset. And Zack, whose wallet is completely empty, Can you let me stay until I find the next place? He said this, once again stating something unbelievable. Furthermore, You must own some apartments, right? Give me at least one free room as a former couple's goodwill. He started making all sorts of demands. Like a weak dog barking incessantly, Zack kept on barking. Knowing that saying anything would be futile, I remained silent and listened until the end. I assume you've received the notification. I have retained a f lawyer, and it's inconvenient to be contacted in this manner. Please communicate through my lawyer going forward. If you wish to have visitation with our son, please file for visitation mediation. With that, I hung up. I blocked all phone calls and emails. Not having to hear Zach's foolish talk or complaints made me feel relieved. Three years have passed since the divorce, and there hasn't been any contact regarding visitation. Frankly, I'm relieved. I absolutely don't want my son to meet his father, his father's family, or anyone associated with him. If you are cornered and end up adopting a close-minded personality, it can be quite challenging. I never want to see my ex-husband's face for the rest of my life, and I don't want to show mine to him either. I don't want to be involved. Even now, information about my ex-husband comes through mutual friends. In the end, Zach lost all his assets, had to pay child support for our son, and also paid alimony to me. He's living at home with his parents with a chip on his shoulder. He was fired from his job after getting into trouble at his company due to his highly conceited personality. Despite all the ragging about my appearance, his hair is shaggy and his shirts are always shabby as he works day and night at a low-paying company. On the other hand, I have built a new house and I'm living with my son. The large mansion that my husband also knows about was put up for sale and we built a completely new house in a different area. I also effectively managed other neglected assets, enabling us to generate income. I cherish the precious time spent with our son, who is growing every day and enjoy each day. Also, I re-enrolled in law school at the same time my son entered kindergarten. I was frustrated when I was younger, but I am studying every day to become a lawyer. The alimony from Zach is well spent on my tuition. Like the cool female lawyer who helped me, I want to strive to become a reliable woman and a proud mother to my son. Life is still ahead of us. I'm going to erase what happened with my ex-husband from my memory and live with my beautiful son enjoying life together.